RFC beneficiaries come from many political movements, from the struggles to preserve civil liberties, wage peace, save the environment, from corporate greed, combat racism and homophobia, from efforts to organize workers, prisoners, immigrants, and others whose human rights are threatened. These activist families are today's Rosenbergs. They struggle to balance their love for their children and grandchildren with their commitment to political change. One of these activists is Russell Maroon Schultz, incarcerated since 1972. I am a new African political prisoner of war. I was a founding member of the Black Unity Council in Philadelphia, which merged with the Black Panther Party in 1969. In August of 1970, at the height of the nationwide repression of the new African liberation movement, I became a fugitive after a Philadelphia policeman was wounded in a retaliatory attack in response to the unjustified killing of a youth. I was convicted for the attack on the police station and sentenced to life imprisonment, life plus imprisonment. In prison, I had the good fortune to listen to the legacy tapes created by the Journal of African Civilizations. These tapes are dedicated to a revision of the role of the African in the world's greatest civilizations, and to the contribution of Africa to the achievement of man in the arts and sciences. It emphasizes what blacks have been given to the world, not what they have lost. I want to make this knowledge available to my grandchildren, so I'm asking for a grant to buy sets of these tapes for their use. I will take on the responsibility of coaching these children through digesting the material on the tapes. I am Russell's son, and I carry his name. My dad used those tapes to teach and connect with his grandchildren through letters, phone calls, and prison visits. My daughter loves the tapes, and my father is in awe of my little girl. He kicks us all out of the visiting room so that he and his little prodigy can talk ideologies, politics, and of course fashion and things like that. <laughs> Those tapes went a long way and bridged a lot of gaps. I am Russell's daughter. My father has been in the Pennsylvania prison system for 40 years. I feel like I grew up in prison. I remember being eight years old and visiting him there. I thought he lived well. The prison lawn was manicured and the shiny floors were waxed. One year for Christmas, I sent my father a silver 50 cent piece that had been given to me. I was too young to know about money orders. I waited for daddy's call. I knew he would be so excited about my present. He never got it. Baby, don't send me money, daddy said later. The guards probably got it. I was devastated. The next visit, I kicked the first guard I saw. <laughs> I was forced to sit in the yard and not allowed to visit daddy. My family was upset with me and didn't understand why I did it. That was the day I knew Daddy wasn't in a nice place. Over the years, the children in our family have received RFC grants for the Legacies tapes, for prison visits, and for activities like tutoring and community theater. I'm older now, and my father's almost 70. I'm worried about him. He's been in prison 40 years, solitary confinement for 30. Mentally, I'm right there with him in that cell, eating the horrible food, sleeping on the cot, taking cold showers, sitting on the hard metal stool, writing to the outside world, seeking support to end the daily torture of solitary confinement. 